This is the fifth section of chapter 11 on vectors and this section is on solving geometric problems. Okay, well there isn't any new content in this section, but if we've got a vector that's divided by a ratio, so we've had questions where a line is divided in the ratio of three to two, for example, but we may get questions where we don't know what that ratio is, then we use maybe Greek letters to represent that ratio. And normally we're gonna use Greek letters like mu, lambda, etc. Example 16. In a diagram, the points A and B have position vectors A and B, so I can see that, um, respectively, refer to the origin. Yep, so the origin is there. The point P divides AB in a ratio 1 to 2. Find a position vector of P. So the first thing I'm going to do is write on the diagram um, this division of the ratio. So point P divides it in a ratio one to two. So we'll have one there, two here. There are three parts in that ratio. So this part A to P is a third, and this part here is two thirds. Okay, so if we want to find the position vector of P, the position of vector of P is o OP. Okay, how do we get from O to P? Well, to get from O to P, I'm gonna go from O to A, which I know, and then from A to P. Now, I don't know that at the moment, but I should be able to work out what AP is. Now, AP is one third of AB. So I'll just write that down. So uh, one third of AB equals AP. Now, I can work out AB. A to B is equal to AO, AO plus OB. Now AO is going to be a negative A and OB is going to be plus B. Or we could write that as B minus A. So we know that AP is one third of that. So AP is equal to one third of what we've just worked out, B minus A, one third of AB. So we've worked out this part here, which is what we need, AP one third of B minus A. So now we can say that OP is equal to OA, and OA is A, plus AP, and AP is one third B minus A. Now we wouldn't leave it like this, we'd simplify it, it's just like algebra. So we have got um, A here, take away a third of A, leaves me with two thirds A plus a third B. So I suppose what I could have done before I did that was just expand the brackets and write plus a third B minus a third A and then simplify it to get this. So this is the position vector of P O P. Example 17, O A B C is a parallelogram. P is the point where the diagonals O B, O B and A C intersect. The vectors A and C are equal to O A and O C. So we'll put that on the diagram. O A is the vector A and B C is parallel to it or C B is parallel. So this is also the vector A and OC is equal to the vector C. That means AB is also the vector C because it's parallel to it and it's the same length. That's a feature of a parallelogram. And what we need to do is to prove that the diagonals bisect each other. Now, if the bi diagonals bisect each other, that means that P is the midpoint of AC and P is also the midpoint of OB. So we'll just state that first. Okay, so that's what we're going to go about proving. We want to show that this OP is half of OB and we want to show that AP is half of AC. Now we don't know what these ratios are. We're not going to assume they're a half. So we're going to give them some names like mu and lambda. So we might say that um, mu times by AC equals AP or lambda times by OB equals OP and we're going to set out to prove that mu and lambda equal a half. 
So the first thing we need to do is to actually write down what these diagonals are. So let's start with the diagonal OB. So we need to write it in terms of A and C. So to get from O to B, I'm going to do OA plus AB. So OB equals O to A and then A to B. So OB equals A plus C. And we'll do the same for the other diagonal, A to C. So if I want to get from A to C, then I could take either route uh, around. It's going to be C minus A minus A plus C. So let's say that we're going to go from A to B and then B to C. So that will give us C minus A. OK, so now this is where we're going to uh, use mu and lambda. So let's start with OP. It's some fraction along OB. So we'll start by writing that OP is some fraction, and we'll use lambda for this, some fraction of OB. OB. Now we've just worked out what OB is. So OP is equal to some fraction of A plus C. Now we're also going to state that A to P is some fraction of AC. Now we don't know what fraction it is, so we can't use the same letter that we've used here, the same great letter. So we're going to say that A to P is equal to some fraction, I'm going to use the Greek letter mu, some fraction of the whole line AC, I don't need brackets, AC, and I've worked out AC, so it's some fraction of C minus A. Now, I need some way of putting these two expressions here, this one and this one, of putting them together. How can I put them together? Well, let's look at the vector that goes from O to P, O to P. Now, there is another way of getting from O to P, and that's O to A and then A to P. Now, A to P appears here. So that's how I'm going to get these two equations together. And that's by this important bit of information here, that to get from O to P, there's a different way of getting from O to P. Before, I'd basically said it's a fraction of OB. But O to P is the same as going from O to A and then A to P. Now AP appears here in my second equation. This is AP. So now I can put them together. I can say that this plus OA, which is A, um, equals uh, this. So this is what we're going to have. OP, which is lambda times by AC, a fraction of OB, equals O to A, and O to A is A, plus A to P, and A to P is some fraction of AC, which is C minus A. So this gets the two equations together, and from here we can use this to try and find mu and lambda. Now, the way we're going to do that is to look at the coefficients of the A vectors and the C vectors. If this is all balanced, then the coefficient of the A terms on both sides will be the same. The coefficient of the C terms will be the same. So let's start by looking at the coefficients. I'll just write coefs like that of the A vectors. Right. So on the left hand side, when I expand the brackets, it'll just be lambda. Actually, it may be helpful just to expand the brackets here. So lambda A plus lambda C equals A plus mu C minus mu A. And then actually what I can do is put together the A terms on the right hand side. So I will have uh, one minus mu of A's plus a mu of C. That makes it easier now to compare the coefficients right so on the left hand side I've got lambda right on the right hand side the coefficient of the a term is one minus mu one minus mu okay now let's look at the coefficients of 
the C vectors. So on the left hand side it's lambda. On the right hand side it's mu. So we've got lambda equals mu. Now what we need to do is to solve these simultaneously. Okay, so the easiest thing to do is to take this and put it in the first equation. So let's um, substitute this lambda for mu because they're equal. So what will I have? I'll have mu equals one minus mu. Then if I um, add mu to both sides, I'll get two mu equals one, which means that mu equals one divided by two is a half. And since that lam lambda equals mu, lambda also equals a half. Right, so what does that mean? That means that these multiples here, these fractions are both a half. So it means that P is the midpoint of OB and AC and hence the diagonals bisect each other. So we'll just state that now. So this proves P is the midpoint of OB and AC because we found that these fractions are both a half. So the diagonals bisect each other. Um, so that completes our proof. Example 18. In the triangle ABC, AB equals 3i minus 2j. So that's this vector here. Let's write that down. 3i minus 2j. That's from A to B. Uh, A to C. So that's this one. A to C is i minus 5j. Find the exact size of angle BAC. So that is this angle here in degrees. Now, if I want to find the size of this angle, and I'm using something like the cosine rule, because I haven't got any other angles, so I need to use the cosine rule, I need to know the length of all three sides. So I've got a vector for this side, I've got a vector for this side, I want a vector for this side, so then I can work out its length. So we want to work out what is the vector that takes us from B to C. So the long way of doing it is to say the vector from B to C is the vector from B to A plus the vector from A to C. So now the vector from B to A is going to be the opposite of this. So that'll be minus 3i minus 2j plus A to C, which is i minus 5j. So we'll do it this way and I'll show you the, the way of doing it by jumps, which, which will be quicker. So minus three minus uh, plus i, so it's minus two i, and then minus negative two, so that becomes two j, minus five j, which will give us uh, negative three j. So that's this side here, b to c, that vector is negative two i minus three j. Now, if I was doing it the jumps way, what's the jump from this point to this point? Well, this point here, I'm going from three down to one, so it's minus two. And from this point to this point, negative two down to negative five, I'm going down by three. So that's probably a useful check or another way of doing it. So the next thing I need to do is to find the uh, lengths of all the sides, lengths of all three sides. That's the modulus um, uh, of the side, or sorry, the magnitude. So we can write it like this. We want to find the length of the side AB. So that'll be Pythagoras on three squared and negative two squared. So that will be uh, root nine plus four so that'll be root 13. Then we want the length of the side um, A to C. So that'll be the square root of one squared plus negative five squared. And that will be one plus 25, so root 26. And then we want the length of the side that we worked out. So that's the one that goes from B to C, the length of the side the magnitude of the side B to C, and that's going to be the square root of negative two squared 
plus negative 3 squared. And that also is going to be root 13. So now we're going to use the cosine rule for finding angles. So that's going to be cos A equals B squared plus C squared minus A squared all over 2BC. Now remember, when we're using the cosine rule to find an angle, this side here must be the side that we call A here. It doesn't matter about the other two. So I'll write down the lengths. So um, we have this side here was root 13. This side here was root 13. And this side here was root 26. So this for A here needs to be root 13. So the cosine of the angle and that angle is angle A, B, A, C in this diagram. So B squared, so that's root 13 squared, plus C squared, that's root 26 squared. You can see how they square out quite nicely. Minus A squared, that's the other root 13 squared, all over 2 times B times C, so that's root 13 times root 26. So what's going to happen, all of these square roots here are going to, um, and squares are going to uh, cancel out. So I'll basically have 13 plus 26 minus 13. That will just leave me with 26. And if I do uh, 2 times root 13 times root 26 on my calculator, I'll get 26 root 2. So that means that my angle uh, BAC, the angle BAC, is equal to the cos inverse of this 26 over 26 root 2, which you can see is just going to become 1 over root 2. And that gives uh, 45 degrees. Now, although it doesn't answer in the question, we could actually work out the type of triangle this, this is. That's 45. It's an isosceles triangle because these two are the same. So this is 45. So it's actually a, a right angled isosceles triangle. This would be a right angle here. So you should now be able to do exercise 11E on pages 246 to 247 of the textbook.